All right, so let me wrap up. Three sort of, uh, three like going away tips. I always like to have going away tips at the end because you never quite know what questions you're going to get. Now, today I've got great questions. They're all full of great going away tips. But sometimes you get the most random questions. So it's always good to say, well, I want to bring it back and say the three things I care about, right? So three specific uh, pieces of advice if you want to predictively enable your organization. And if you were asleep for the rest of the presentation and only wake up for this bit, you're probably still good. First one, I like to misquote the late Stephen Covey. You have to begin with the decision in mind. If you are going to use predictive analytics, more advanced analytics, you have to really break this habit that we've all developed with BI, which is that my job is simply to put a bunch of data in front of people and they will make better decisions. As we were saying, build it and they will come. If I build enough, if I spend enough money on analytic infrastructure, my decision making will improve. Well, with predictive analytics, it will only improve if you know which decision you're actually trying to improve, you understand what a better decision looks like, and you're actually focused on the decision. So begin with the decision in mind, not with the data, not with the analytic. Secondly, um, you need to build what I call the three-legged stool of analytics. You need to get your IT professionals, your analytic professionals, your data scientists, the people who are working, and the people who own your business to collaborate. And you need them to focus on these decisions as a set. Uh, organizations that are successful using predictive analytics overwhelmingly start projects with all three groups represented. And if you have a separate operations group, all four groups represented. They don't allow the analytics team to go off and try and build an analytic. They don't let the IT guys go off and try and build an analytic. They say, no, we're going to put analytic skills, system skills, business skills, operation skills together at the very beginning of the project. And it can seem like a little bit of a waste. We'll say, well, but we haven't even figured out if we can do the analytic yet. And the answer from folks who've gone through this is it doesn't matter. Because just because you can do the analytic doesn't mean it's going to help improve the business outcomes and doesn't mean you can actually practically get access to that data when you need to. So you have to have everybody involved right at the beginning. So begin as you mean to go on, get those three groups to be part of how you start with predictive analytics. And lastly, uh, remember that the end goal here is a predictively enabled organization. Uh, and that means you're going to have to think about how you're going to industrialize this. And that means that's going to limit how much you can learn from people who've perhaps been doing it a long time or people who've got onesie twosie areas where they use analytics because they tend to be able to do it in a much more artisanal way. You know, if I'm a bank and I've got risk models, I have a banking customer, as I talked earlier, they're very sophisticated when it comes to risk analytics, but you don't need very many models in risk analytics. And so they're handcrafted and they're reviewed by regulators. There's this whole you know, handcrafted thing going with them. Well, when you get into marketing, they need hundreds, thousands of propensity models to decide what offers to make people. Well, they start and they try and build the models the way they've always built the models. And it doesn't work. So you have to think about how am I going to scale this up? And that means thinking differently about the kind of analytic infrastructure you need uh, right from the beginning. Thank you very much.